The NFL Combine has concluded, and we have a new post-Combine mock draft. It is the fourth mock draft since the start of the NFL playoffs. So today, I'm going to talk about the top 10 picks in this latest mock draft and some of the noise that's coming out of the NFL Combine right here on Football Scout 365. Now, before we get started with the analysis, I want to remind everyone to check out our website, footballscout365.com, for the latest written content, including the full 32 picks of this mock draft, all of the post-NFL Combine player analysis. You can find all of that and much more on our website, footballscout365.com. Now, as I mentioned prior to the NFL Combine, the real value of the event is the player interviews with the NFL teams and their medical evaluations, but you can also gain a ton of insight from just media sessions or the interviews with the media members and the individual players. Now, most of the top players, they met with the media, including Caleb Williams. All of the top quarterbacks, by the way, they met with the media in some capacity. J.J. McCarthy, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, etc. Uh, the value in these sessions is that when these players meet with the media, they are often going to discuss some of the teams that they have met with and I always pay closer attention to the teams the players discuss the most. And I take that as a sign that the interview was memorable or meaningful in some capacity. So, for example, Caleb Williams, he mentioned that he met with the Bears, the Commanders, the Patriots, basically the top three teams of the NFL draft order. He had other scheduled meetings, but these are the most notable meetings that he discussed. Now, Drake May... He basically met with the same list of teams as Caleb Williams, uh, but he also mentioned teams like the New York Giants, the Denver Broncos, the Las Vegas Raiders. So May, he met with three teams that would certainly need to trade up based on uh, current NFL draft projections at this point in time. Uh, Denver would have to trade up. The, the Las Vegas Raiders would have to trade up. Even the New York Giants would have to potentially trade up unless something shakes out a little differently uh, in terms of the projections for Drake May currently. Uh, Jaden Daniels, he also met with the top three teams in the draft order. He also had the Falcons as a notable visit and the Denver Broncos as well as the Las Vegas Raiders were on his list. Now, J.J. McCarthy, he mentioned that he had met with the top three teams in the draft order as well. He also met with the Giants, the Vikings, the Raiders. He mentioned that he had met with about 11 teams. Uh, he said this during an on-air uh, conversation with Rich Eisen and Daniel Jeremiah from NFL Network. So the key takeaways from these interviews are that Caleb Williams, he's not entertaining any idea of not going number one overall. Most people already believe it's a foregone conclusion that he's going to land with the Chicago Bears number one overall in the 2024 NFL Draft. Another key takeaway is that Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy, he spoke glowingly about the Giants interview and the Vikings interview. The Vikings, in my opinion, they're going to need to trade up if they're going to draft J.J. McCarthy. The Giants, maybe not, but that depends on the Cardinals and the Chargers ahead of them and their motivation to stay where they are or whether they want to move back and gain more draft capital. Uh, the consensus still remains that the top three picks are going to be Caleb Williams to the Bears, Drake May to the Commanders, and Jaden Daniels to the Patriots. Now, as far as today's mock draft is concerned, I'm going to encapsulate that QB discussion a bit within the top 10. I also have a trade by one team that wants to get in front of the Giants to grab a quarterback in the top five of this NFL draft and another team that sees a generational non QB talent that's falling within the top 10. So this particular team is going to trade up to grab this guy number 10 overall. So let's hop into the mock draft 4.0. This could be the last one until at least early April. I plan to kind of kickstart things back up at the start of April and then kind of finish this thing out through the 2024 NFL Draft. I want to remind you that I do use the PFF Mock Draft Simulator. Uh, I do incorporate the Football Scout 365 player rankings, which you can locate on the website, footballscout365.com. I always try to focus my picks on team needs, best available, and scheme fit when I do these mock drafts. So a lot of thought goes into these picks at the end of the day. Okay, picking number one overall, obviously we have the Chicago Bears. I already told you the consensus in the media or others that are doing mock drafts similar to this is that Caleb Williams will be the number one overall pick and the Bears are gonna trade Justin Fields. So in today's mock draft, we're gonna assume Justin Fields is on his way to the Atlanta Falcons. The Bears are gonna get the potential generational talent at quarterback in Caleb Williams. I would say the Bears are going to get a fourth or fifth round pick for Justin Fields. That's kind of the noise out there right now. That's a little low in my opinion, uh, but we'll kind of see how that shakes out uh, when it's all said and done. Uh, with the second pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, Washington Commanders select the next obvious player, and that's North Carolina quarterback Drake May. 
Uh, nothing wild with the second overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft. It's all chalk at this point. All right, so keeping it moving here with a third pick in the 2024 NFL draft, we have the Patriots. They did not trade out. They could trade out. They could also pursue a veteran free agent QB. They will not do that in my mock draft currently, and they will take LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels. Now, the rumor is they want to secure a veteran quarterback and then draft one of the top rookie QBs. In my opinion, that's always the best way to go about this, especially with this particular class. In addition, if the Patriots, who I mocked J.J. McCarthy to in a prior mock draft, were to pick him, he's only 21 years old. In fact, he just turned 21 in January. So keep that in mind when you hear about the Patriots looking at Joe Flacco, for example, to come in and be that veteran presence with a young rookie quarterback. But today, that rookie quarterback is going to be Jaden Daniels, a player that since his time at Arizona State caught my attention. And his move to LSU under Brian Kelly is what really paid dividends for him at the end of the day. Now, with the fourth pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, we have the Arizona Cardinals. They are a possible trade back candidate, but the Cardinals, they have the most draft picks in the entire draft. They basically have three first round picks because pick 34 in this deep of a draft class is a crazy good spot. But at pick four overall, the majority believe it's gonna be Ohio State wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. or LSU wide receiver Malik Neighbors. And in this particular mock draft, we're gonna go with Marvin Harrison Jr. Now with the number five pick overall in the 2024 NFL draft, the LA Chargers, they could get Malik Neighbors here. They could go Roma Dunze. They could go with an elite corner like Quinion Mitchell, or they could trade back and gain additional draft capital. So I'm going to go with the speculative trade up by the Minnesota Vikings. Now, in order to get this trade done, I had to offer the 11th overall pick for the fifth overall pick, as well as my number 42 overall pick for the Minnesota Vikings in the 2024 NFL draft. Now, when I did this, the mock draft simulator, it rejected that offer. So I had to offer a 2025 fifth round pick as well in the PFF mock draft simulator accepted the trade. So with the fifth overall pick, the Vikings are going to move ahead of the New York Giants to grab Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy. They are going to reset at the quarterback position. They're going to move on from Kirk Cousins, who is asking for too much money. They don't have to give up a ton of draft capital to get there. Maybe in a real life situation, they do have to give up another first round pick just based off QB value overall. But J.J. McCarthy is a perfect fit in Kevin O'Connell's offense. I believe it'll be seamless going from Michigan to Minnesota. The Vikings are going to get their guy, a player who would probably be the QB1 or QB2 in the 2025 NFL draft if he decided to stay at Michigan for one more year. Now, at number six overall, we have the Giants. They might have wanted J.J. McCarthy themselves. Now they're going to pivot and they're going to go wide receiver. They haven't had an elite wide receiver since Odell Beckham. So why not go get that guy right now? And that's going to be Washington wide receiver, Roma Dunze. I originally had Joe Alt go into the Giants here. I changed it. They cannot pass on this type of talent at the wide receiver position. A guy that some people have rated as their WR1 or WR2, even ahead of Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors. So you are getting an absolute contested catch savant. He's an absolute dog. He proved it at the combine. He showed off his 4-4 speed, and the tape is unreal. Now, with the number seven overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, we have the Tennessee Titans. They need an offensive tackle. They need to shore up that offensive line. They need to support their young second-year quarterback in Will Levis, and they're going to take the elite-level offensive tackle from Notre Dame, Joe Alt. He had a killer NFL combine, by the way. This guy measured out at six foot eight on top of all that. This guy is a behemoth. This is an absolute steal at this particular spot. In any other NFL draft class, and I'd say maybe the past 10 years, this guy is not getting out of the top five picks. Now at number eight overall, we have the Atlanta Falcons. And since they acquired Justin Fields from the Chicago Bears already, they're going to add another weapon in wide receiver Malik Neighbors out of LSU. This is an absolute home run of a pick. You're going to pair him with Drake London and Kyle Pitts. You have Justin Fields, a quarterback. You have B. John Robinson at running back. This offense is absolutely stacked. They are prepared to win their division. This looks like a playoff team if this were to happen, especially on the offensive side of the football. They still have a ton of work to do in the draft. They've got good draft capital to work with here to keep building on this. Uh, they could potentially trade back out of this spot if they wanted to, but you're not passing on Malik neighbors. You're just going to elevate this offense tenfold with Drake London. It's going to elevate Drake London even more to have Malik neighbors opposite of him. It'll just be completely insane. Now with the number nine overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft, the Chicago Bears select Toledo cornerback Quinion Mitchell. This dude is an absolute dog. 
His draft stock has elevated so much since the start of this combine process, which began down in Mobile, Alabama at the Senior Bowl. He has elite coverage skills at the cornerback position. He's got some positional versatility. You can move him around if you need to. He's a physical guy as well, and he showed it at the combine where he threw up 22 reps at 225, which is amazing for the cornerback position, by the way. He's six foot, 200 pounds. He ran a 4-3-3-40. He is absolutely going to be up there or in the conversation to be a top 10 pick in the 2024 NFL draft. He's going to compete for the top corner in this draft with Cooper DeGene and Terrion Arnold and Nate Wiggins, who are all considered uh, cornerback one potential in the 2024 NFL draft. So one of my favorite players, I believe he's going to continue to rise. In my opinion, He's one of several guys who are outside of the top 10 big board rankings that could, in any other draft, be elevated into the top 10. Now, with the number 10 overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft, we have the Cincinnati Bengals. They're going to trade up with the New York Jets. They're going to trade their 18th overall pick and the 80th overall pick to move up eight spots, and they are going to draft Georgia tight end Brock Bowers. Now, imagine adding Brock Bowers into this offense with Jamar Chase, with T. Higgins, Joe Burrow at quarterback, are you kidding me? Like, this is instant upgrade on the offensive side of the football. Okay, a few other notable picks that I have in this mock draft beyond the top 10, which you can find the full 32 picks on our website, footballscout365.com. I have the Chargers. They're going to go with a defensive back at pick number 11. Iowa's Cooper DeGene. I think he's a perfect fit in Jesse Menner's scheme. Uh, you get the versatile corner who could play safety. He's an absolute chess piece on defense. Now, pick 12 has a surprise. I'm going to leave that one for you to check out on the website. But pick 21, I have LSU wide receiver Brian Thomas Jr. going to the Miami Dolphins. He could absolutely go a lot higher than this. I'm seeing people projecting him up closer to the top 10. After his combine performance, he had an elite performance at the NFL Combine. Now at pick 28, I have Adane Mitchell going to the Bills. He had an amazing Combine as well. And at pick 32, I've got Lad McConkey going to the Kansas City Chiefs. And everyone's NFL Combine darling, I've got Xavier Worthy going at pick number 33 to the Carolina Panthers. So they're going to get the explosive playmaker that they need to pair with Bryce Young. And overall, this mock draft, I have five quarterbacks going in round one, six wide receivers, seven offensive tackles, six corners, and five edge rushers. This is a deep and talented wide receiver class. I have 20 plus wide receivers ranked in the top 100. I'm going to be updating the top 100 this week with any changes post combine. I'll post all of that on the website. Again, that's footballscout365.com. So once I get that updated, you'll be able to check that out. Uh, that's going to do it though. That is the latest mock draft after the NFL combine. Did I overdraft anyone? Did I underdraft anyone? I already had JJ McCarthy going in the top 10 anyway. I've already been, you know, raked over the coal, so to speak. Uh, by a lot of people in comment sections in different mock drafts that I've done so far. Uh, Brock Bowers may be falling to 10th overall. That might be the biggest change. At the end of the day, this is the latest and greatest mock draft. All this stuff isn't going to matter at the end of the day. We all know this is pointless. These exercises are pointless, uh, but it is a lot of fun to hop on here and, and really kind of connect the dots a little bit in what people are actually thinking out there and really kind of going back and in, in looking at older mock drafts that I've done and comparing and saying, okay, this guy, he fell back. He's more of a second rounder rather than a first rounder. And just really comparing and contrasting in that way until we kind of hit the spot as we get closer to the 2024 NFL draft. Now, I will be on break until early April. Don't forget to check out the website, footballscout365.com. I might post some additional content if I have some time in between. Uh, but I do want to say thank you for the support. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more great NFL draft content.